guys uh, how are you doing i hope uh, you are all doing well uh, uh, guys it's been uh, more than two months since the uh, class has been closed because of the pandemic covid 19 and guys uh, no, i think nobody knows when and how the class begins but until then let's keep in touch uh, by different uh, online platforms like telegram uh, or uh, other uh, chat applications so uh, let's try to finish what you have started on the class so guys i am uh, making a video lecture on the course theory of computation and automata uh, and i am starting from uh, week three actually i'm explaining the uh, course topics starting from week three because i didn't cover this week uh, for the other class for computer engineering so uh, I will give you the materials on Telegram, the PPT materials or PDF or any other uh, something to read on the course. And uh, if you need further explanations uh, or exercise, the exercises on your PPT to be explained, I'm making this video and I will make sure you get this video. For those of you who are in campus, I'm thinking uh, you get this video with a USB flash or something else. And for those of you who are not in the campus, for the civilian students, I going, I'm going to upload this uh, uh, video on my YouTube channel and I will give you that link on the te Telegram group so you can go and access it if you are in somewhere uh, with internet access. Uh, but uh, if you are not, uh, it's not mandatory to watch this video. Uh, the pipettes are uh, enough, I think. And uh, if you have any questions, you can post on the Telegram group. We can discuss and go through it on the Telegram channel. Even I will just uh, uh, make it on a paper and post it like a picture. So uh, let's get started. So I think we have uh, stopped uh, on week three on the previous section on the class before the pandemic so this is the uh, week three so this is theory of uh, automata in the computation is chapter two week three there so still we are in chapter two finite automata regular expression and languages so non-deterministic finite automata the next topic is to be discussed is uh, non-deterministic finite automata so what is this non-deterministic finite automata let's have some recap from the previous section that we have covered on the class first you have discussed about automata what is automata what is finite automata where did this automata came from and so on we have already discussed that an automata it comes the word automata came from the word automatic or the term automatic meaning self-acting machine we have already discussed that and the, uh, the word automata or the term automata is for a polar form. That means if you have one machine, we call it one automaton. If you have two machines, you say two automata. Two automata. So for the, for the sake of uh, reading, we say we call it automata even for one machine. So why uh, do we say this finite? Why is the term finite is combined with automata? Why, why we say finite automata? We say finite automata because every machine uh, or every automatic machine has a number of states. To execute attack, there are steps that the machine goes through those steps executing those tasks. So the number of states existing on that machine are limited or numbered. So because those states are finite, we call that machine finite automata. And we have already uh, divided this finite automata into different categories. Finite automata is divided into two parts. The first one is finite automata with output, and the second one is finite automata without output. This finite automata that provides outputs are also classified further into MIDI machine and more machine that we didn't cover yet. And the second one is finite automata with outputs that does not provide output are also furtherly divided into finite auto uh, deterministic finite automata or DFA, non-deterministic finite automata or NFA that is going to be our topic right now and the next one is going to be epsilon NFA or epsilon non-deterministic finite automata so we have seen DFA, DFA means non-deterministic uh, finite automata 
and this deterministic finite automata means the state of transition from one state into another state is determined by the user or by the uh, operator for example if you have a design or a mission uh, of an an DFA or deterministic finite automata if you know your current state and if you know your input file that means you can determine or you can guess what the next state will be that is DFA now the topic is non-deterministic finite automata so in non-deterministic finite automata given a current state there could be multiple next states that means there is no uh, a single uh, next state in this uh, non-deterministic finite automata if you know the current state and if you know your input file you cannot guess what the next state will be so as you can see here as you can see here uh, the next state uh, uh, could be chosen at random or a parallel the next state it could be randomly or parallelly chosen so in a deterministic finite automata has the power to be at several states at once it can go into multiple states at the same time with one single input for example let's say you have one state let's say this is state a or your initial state and there is also another state here also you have another state here and another state here so this is assume this is your initial state so if you see a single input for example let's say you have for inputs one you go to this state b and if you see also input one you go to state c if you see also input one you go to state d so this means being in current state which is a if you see a single input one you may go to state b you may go to state c you may go to state d or you may go to all states at the same time you don't know that you don't actually predict that that's why this kind of machines are called non-deterministic finite automata that means non-determined you cannot determine the next set so uh, upon receiving a single input the automata can go to multiple inputs like this is b and c it can go to multiple states so we do, we do have also uh, a formal definition of this uh, non-deterministic finite automata let's see it uh, non-deterministic finite automata also uh, represented with five tuples like this uh, dfa that is q uh, sigma delta q naught and f every one of these symbols have their own meaning for example if you see q q is a set of set uh, states that means set of states in your uh, automata is represented by capital q sigma represents your alphabet the set, the elements of your alphabet is called input symbols q is your initial state or your start state f is set of final status or accepting status we call it set of final status because there could be multiple final states but there is only one initial state we have already discussed that delta is a transition function that mark that maps q cross sigma into to the power of q it maps q cross sigma into to the power of q but in dfa we already said that delta transmission uh, transition function maps q cross sigma into q so we will see uh, the difference let's uh, see it here in dfa in dfa then you in dfa q cross sigma was mapped to q that means if you are in the current state and if you receive a single input you go to a single next state that means there is only one next state in dfa but in nfa in nfa in nfa q cross sigma is mapped into 
to the power of q meaning if you are in the current state and if you receive some input it maps into to the power of uh, q i will explain this how it is uh, maps for example if you have two states state a and state b state a and state b in nfa state a on receiving a simple a single input it can it may go to state a itself or it may go to state b or it may go to state a and state b at the same time or it may go to not nowhere or into input state so the number of status you have here is two and the formula you are going to apply here is to the power of q which is here two so how many probabilities do we have we have four probabilities of going to the next state so in nfa if you have a q number of uh, status the next state is going to be to the power of q so let's continue so here we have an example let uh, we have uh, there is a language given l is equal to set of all strings that ends with zero so design uh, this uh, nfa and uh, apply it if whether this input 100 is accepted by this design or not so what do we do here is first we uh, are going to uh, list out our alphabet our alphabet in this is 0 and 1 0 and 1 and the language is going to be the language is a set of all strings that end with 0 what is the first string that end with 0 is 0 itself the next string that end with 0 is 1 0 or 0 0 and it continues like that it is going to be infinite so this is your language so in order to accept uh, in order to design uh, an NFA that is accepts this language we already designed it here let's see how we design this here we have design we have make two states state q0 and state q1 why didn't we we already have a first string zero why didn't we accept the first uh, zero on this you may think some of you that why didn't we accept the first zero in this state because if i make it here and if i delete this part if i delete this part and if i make it this my final state that means even though my first string is one i am accepting this and the first thing one itself is not included in your language so if you see the first zero you go to next state and you accept it if you see another zero or if you see zeros and ones you stay in q -net. for example if you see zero zero and zero the first zero you may stay it here the second zero stay here and the last zero you go to your final state if it begins with one the first one will stay in q not then q not q not finally it go to final state malatna so let's check whether the input 100 is accepted by this design or not the first one the first one is going to be into q not the second zero process it direct what is it what is it at the same time it go to q1 and q not and when we process this last bit which is zero it go to q not itself and because the last one of the last states is a final state the nfa will accept the design malatna accept the aragual let's continue the process so look at this when i see the first input symbol q1 man one it go to from q1 into q1 it state zero in q naught when i see input zero it go to q naught and q1 at the same time and when i see next zero it go to q naught and q1 at the same time now we check these three status at the same time 
እነዚህ ሶስቱንም ቼክ እናረጋለን if one of the three states are your final state that means this nfa is going to accept the input string if one of these three states is non final uh, you don't have any final state in this set of states that means the input is going to be rejected by the design so because one of these is my final state which is q1 so 100 is going to be accepted by the nfa malata so let's continue we have also another example design an nfa on a language set of all strings that starts with zero you already uh, seen that's in this with zero now it starts with zero now our alphabet is zero and one and your language is going to be what is the first string that starts with zero zero itself what is the next string that starts with zero 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 what is the third string starts with zero zero one and so on it continues because the length of the string is not limited here so here uh, first i'm going to uh, circle or i am going to make my initial always start from initial state this is my initial state so the first input string is zero so i should accept it so if i see the first input zero which is zero what i have to do is i should accept it i should make it my final state then after that while uh, once my string is started with zero you don't care whether the next uh, bit is zero or one so doesn't matter so in my final state if i see another zero or if i see another one i should stay in my final state this way i'm accepting every string that starts with zero marathon so here we didn't mention that what happens to a on input one ziga the a the input line many on a million men a lot of mention a lot of if it was dfa it does matter if it was it would matter because in dfa it is not allowed to leave a state without mentioning it what happens to that state if an input is received or not for every input symbol in the alphabet planar. so but in here in dfa we can leave any state without mention about uh, what happens to that state whether we discuss on the input uh, symbols or not so here if you can leave it like this matter so this kind of uh, configuration is called dead configuration so state a at input one goes to input set this is called dead configuration in dfa it was uh, there was a term called dead state or trap state where a state ca where you cannot if you cannot reach uh, from if you go to a state where you cannot go come uh, back to other states that state is called uh, dead state or trap state but here this kind of configuration is called uh, dead configuration so let's continue So here we have an example uh, construct an nfa that accepts set of all strings over zero and one of links two so uh already let me uh, take this into the board okay here this is the example now the first example is going to be uh, an nfa that accepts set of all the strings over zero and one of links to the links of the string is already limited now my input alphabets are zero one my language is now going to be uh, set of all strings over zero and one now the set of all strings of links two is going to be zero 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 one zero one one zero and 
one, one. This is my language. So how we can, how you design such kind of language with NFA? So what I have to do is first, if I see zero zero, I, I should accept it. So I already discussed it in the class. The first state, which is your initial state, is a set of all strings of length zero binary. So this is your state A. So this is length zero. If I see zero, or if I see one. I should go to next state and the second state is called state of all strings of links one this is link zero so if I see another zero or if I see one I should go to other state which is state C or another state so this third state is state of all strings of links no matter so I should make this my final state so the length of my string is now two this is if I see zero for example if the input is zero zero if I see zero I go to this state if I see the next zero I go to this state and I'm accepting it and if I see if the input is one one if I see one I go to this state if I see the next one I go to this state and this is already accepted so we can leave this non-final state, this final state, uh, leaving without mentioning what, ha what happens to this state if I see another zero or one. Because this is NFA, you can leave it like it right now. So L1 is, or uh, the first uh, example, this one is already discussed here. Now the second is L1 language is given, set of all strings that in this with one. Let me expand it in this with one. So my language is going to going to be L1 set of all strings that in this with one. The first string that in this with one is going to be one. The second string that in this with one is going to be zero one and one one and continue because the length of string doesn't limit limit slot the uh, language in finite one now. So uh, remember set of all strings that in this with one should be designed. So uh, what you have to do is here the first string first I should start with my final my initial state. If I see the first string one that in this with one I should go to my final state this is my final state if i see any zeros or ones before this one i stay in my initial state that clear this is my initial state that means if i see zero or one before the last one i am staying in my final state but if if, if i reach with one uh, last bit i should go to my final state mother Let's check with some uh, uh, input files, for example, one, zero, zero, one. Let's check whether this input is accepted by this NFA or not. The first one will stay, sorry, one, zero, zero, one. I'm sorry for the writing uh, issues. So the first one will be stayed in. Uh, this state second two zeros will be also stayed in the initial state when the last uh, bit is processed i'm going to my final state and i'm accepting such kind of input file is not now so this is another example uh, we already uh, done this in the class uh, you can go and refer to computer and system engineering exercise i think they have on their own exercise book they already done it on the class so the next steps are also uh, easy you can go for it and discuss so let's continue to the next topic the next topic is going to be 
the next quick topic is how uh, to use an NFA. This is already uh, discussed. Read it. Uh, building an NFA for the following language. For example, uh, you have given uh, a language W such that W contains in zero and one. The language is contains zero. So how do you design that kind of language? Let's look at this diagram to save time. Assume uh, there is a state Q0, Q1, and Q3, Q2 here. So for the time being, let's ignore this part. Ignore this part. If this part was ignored, to reach your final state, the input string is now 0 and 1. 0 and 1. If you see 0 and 1, you are reaching your final state. But how do you make multiple uh, input files but that does that does contain this 0 and 1? So you leave it like it. You leave this zero and this one as it is because you need it in your uh, stream uh, file input files so now add this thing uh, recover this one recover any combination of zero and one zigarling and any combination of uh, Zero and one after that halin. Lam sali ziga hulu million chilan ziga maganyo input zero zero lehoni chilan ziga zero zero lehoni chilan ziga yalum betamasai zero zero lehoni chilan input. We don't know that. But so many uh, possibilities of input files may arrive. So we need zero and one to be in here and zero and one in order so we already make a string or input file that contains zero and one in it malatna so this design works for the question mark so this is a stage transition where does this q not go on zero and where does this q not go on one a million is already discussed for example q not q not on zero go to q1 and it also stays in q zero itself so it go to q not in the q1 at the same time and let's check it for input file one q not on one stays in q not so here menar again q q not let's go to q1 q1 on zero goes to nowhere so we represent is with input set we call this is we call this kind of configuration dead configuration balance. It is possible in DFA kind of automata. And Q1 on 1 goes to Q1. Uh, Q2, sorry. Ziga, Q2. And this is again state transition already. Clear Silvana. And Catalo Demi Catalo topic. So there is a difference between uh, DFA and NFA. I think you are familiar with the, the difference and it is already clearly defined here. Go through it and read it. Uh, the next uh, topic is going to be minimization of DFA. Minimization of DFA. Why do we need uh, to minimize uh, DFA kind of uh, missions? So minimization of DFA requires to be minimal version of any DFA which consists of the minimal number of states possible. For example, I already told you any uh, automata or any DFA or non-deterministic uh, finite automata contains number of states. So as the number of states uh, increase or grow, the need for the CPU to ex time to execute that task or the memory to, to save that uh, task will also increase. That, is, that will not make it efficient. So in order to make it efficient and preferable, we have to decrease the number of states possible in the design or in the automata model. For example, uh, let's, take, uh, let's look at this example. If you have a DFA with five states, and also if you have another DFA with four states, but the two uh, DFAs perform the same task, which one do you to prefer or which one do you select? The one with four states is uh, preferable and it is efficient uh, according to uh, uh, regarding to CPU time and uh, memory space. Matter. So we make uh, it uh, minimize as possible. So the next topic is equivalent states. 
when do we say two states are equivalent for example we have two states state a and b and if you are going to say state a and state b are uh, equivalent uh, here there are uh, properties here state uh, the delta transition of a if a and b are going to be equivalent the transition of state a on input x goes to f implies delta transition of b on x also goes to f let me explain it here if state a on input file input file action x one leon channel zero leon channel it could be one or zero let's say x is equal to zero no villain as him narc x is equal to zero villain as him narc so if if you are in state a and if you see zero if state a goes to one of your final status that means state b should be also go to one of your final states that makes the two status equivalent state a and state b the next property is delta transition of a on input x implies not f implies delta transition function of b x implies not f this means if state a on input 0 goes to one of non final states let's say that state is state d state b should also go to that non final state on input 0 that is state d let's say state d is not f that means non final state and if a and b on input 0 goes to that non final state which is same state or same state that means a and b are going to be equivalent that's why both way two states can be said equivalent so uh, depending on the length of a string there are number of equivalent for example if the length of your string is 0 you can have zero equivalence if the length of a string is one we can have one equivalence two equivalence three equivalence and if the length of a string is n you can have n equivalence so this way you can uh, go for minimization of the dfa let's look at this example so uh, example given the following state diagram dfa determine the equivalent states how do we determine the equivalent status for this one so here we have already given a dfa or uh, a design so the next uh, going to be solution the solution is the first thing you should do is you should make or you should list out the zero equivalence and one equivalence two equivalence and so on this way we deter we list out the equivalence status and we minimize depending on the equivalent states so the first thing you should do is equivalent state list out maragno let me take this one into the board Sorry. To take. Okay. Let's go through it. okay let's say this is zero equivalence zero equivalence is a b c d and d how did you how do you do we make this in order to make the word list out the zero equivalence you separate or you uh, 
set separate or you make two uh, group states the first group set is going to be the non-final state the next group set is going to be the final states if you have multiple final states include in the final state group so because a b c and d are non-final states we make them one group set because e is our final state we make it as one uh, set so the next one is to list out the one equivalence how do we make the one equivalence by referencing the zero equivalence in order to one in order to make the one equivalence you refer to your zero equivalence so here let's compare whether this group set is equivalent to each other or not how do we make that let's make it here one equivalent determine lamarack first i will compare whether a and b are equivalent to each other or not a and b now a and b laragno compare laragno i will go to my transition table for the original design so a on input 0 goes to b and b on input 0 goes to b they are they are go for a same state so there is no problem with input 1 with input 0 and we will check it with input 1 a on input 1 goes to state c b on input 1 goes to state d and state d and state c are in the same group which is in the non final set group set set groups so a and b are one equivalent so they should be written in the same set group malatno so the next thing is compare whether uh, state A and D C are equivalent to each other. So let's go for it. State A on zero goes to B. State C on zero goes to B. There is no problem here. State A on one goes to C. State C on one goes to C. So still there is no problem. So state C is also equivalent with A and B. The last one is state D. Let's check whether state D is equivalent or not with other uh, states. Let's check it. State A on 0 goes to state B. State D on 0 goes to state B. So there is no problem here. They are going to the same state. So state A on state on input 1 goes to state C here. State D on input 1 goes to state E here this one and this one now check whether c and d are in the same group sets state c is in the non-final state group and state e is in the final state group so a and c are not equivalent or they are not one equivalent to each other so state d should be separately grouped this is going to be a state finally i am having a state e this is my make one equivalent the next one is two equivalent two equivalent lemasrat mendena menaraga we will compare whether state a and b are two equivalent to each other now we will check state a on 0 goes to b state b on 0 goes to b no problem state a on 1 goes to c state b on one goes to d now compare c and d c and d are they in the same group c is in this group and d is in this group so a and b are not two equivalent anymore so b should be separately written here so next let's check whether a and c are two equivalent to each other now a on input 0 goes to b and c on input 0 goes to b a on input uh, 1 goes to c c on input 1 goes to c no problems so a and c are two equivalent to each other so here b will be separated and d will be written as it is this is d actually and he will be separately 
written here so if you go for the third state for the third equivalent here look at here we are going to get the same so if two rows consecutive rows uh, come out with the same result we stop we stop the processing for example so here it is time to stop the process because the result of two consecutive rows are the same because this one and this one are the same we stop the process now how many uh, states do we get state one two three and four before it was one two three four five there was five states and we have make it uh, four states now a and c are now combined together a and c are going to be one state called or namely a c b is going to be another state uh, d is going to be another state and uh, e is going to be another state now this is already minimized and the transition table will be made by referring it to the original uh, table for example here where does this a and c go if you see a sim symbol or an input file zero let's make it let's refer to a a on zero goes to b and c on zero goes to b so this on zero they go to b and on one a on one goes to c c on one goes to c since there is no c state here c is uh, combined with state a we make it like this and this is going to be one b on zero goes to b that means on zero it is going to stay in b next b on one is going to be going to in to d next state is state d state d on zero what it had all what b had all the b had all on zero is it got what a e on one more let's know what it had all what a now we have let we, we have left with state e state e on one on on zero it go to state b on one it go to state c because there is no state c state there is state c is combined with state a it go to state a c so this is your final minimized design of uh, DFM alert now. This is this way we can make or we can minimize any DFA into it is possible minimized DFM alert now. So uh, thank you. We will continue the next section.